The Algorithmic Puppeteer, How Invisible Strings Shape Your Reality. Think you're in control? Oh, ye sweet, sweet summer child. Discover the hidden puppet masters pulling your digital strings. Welcome back to another episode of Information for Life, insights and ideas to navigate your world. Today, we're diving into the labyrinth of modern algorithms. These invisible puppet masters are shaping your thoughts, your actions, and even how others perceive you. Not to mention how you perceive yourself. So sit tight and let's unravel the strings that tie us to this digital marionette. Section 1. The Hidden Architects of Your Digital World Ah, algorithms. Picture this. You walk into a dimly lit bar, the kind of place where the air is thick with the scent of stale beer and cigarette smoke. The bartender, let's call him Algo, greets you with a nod. He doesn't wait for your order, he already knows. He slides a glass down the counter, your usual, whether you like it or not. But Algo is no ordinary bartender. He doesn't just remember your drink. He remembers your conversations, your friends, even the way your eyes linger on the exit sign. He's not just serving drinks. He's serving experiences tailored just for you. Or so he claims. Zuboff, 2020. Now, if Algo were a real bartender, you'd probably call that creepy. Maybe even get a restraining order. But in the digital world, we call that personalization. According to Karen Young's study in the Journal of Artificial Intelligence Research, algorithms have their tendrils in almost every pie you can think of, from the news you read to the people you swipe right on, Young, 2017. They're like omnipresent architects, sketching the blueprints of our digital lives. But here's the kicker. What exactly is on that blueprint? Is it a cozy home tailored to your needs? Or is it more like a maze designed to keep you lost, clicking, and most importantly, consuming. Taina Booker, in her book, If, Then, Algorithmic Power and Politics, delves into the political implications of these algorithms. Booker, 2018. They're not neutral tools. They have agendas. Whether it's to keep you scrolling, to influence your political leanings, or to make you buy that pair of shoes you glanced at once, these algorithms are designed and continue to evolve at a mind-boggling pace with specific outcomes in mind. To shape and mold you into something without an identity of your own, while insidiously thinking that you have an identity that isn't theirs. They're not just passive mirrors reflecting our desires. They're active agents shaping what we see and how we interact with the world. And let's not forget about the search engine manipulation effect, a term coined by Epstein and Robertson, Epstein and Robertson 2015. This is where it gets a bit Orwellian. Search engines, guided by algorithms, can significantly sway public opinion and even election outcomes. Imagine Algo the bartender whispering in the ears of every patron, subtly nudging them to vote for a particular candidate. It's like having a lobbyist in your pocket, except this one doesn't even need to buy you dinner first. So we're not just talking about a bartender who knows your favorite drink. We're talking about a bartender who knows your life, influences your decisions, and even meddles in your democratic rights. It's high time we ask ourselves, what kind of world are these digital architects building for us? And more importantly, do we have any say in it? Section 2. The Mirror and the Mask Picture this. You're standing in front of a mirror, but it's not just any mirror. It's a funhouse mirror, the kind that stretches your legs, shrinks your head, and makes you look like a caricature of yourself. Now, what if you had to look into this mirror every day? What if this distorted reflection became your new normal? You might start to believe that this is who you truly are. Well, welcome to the algorithmic funhouse, my friends. Epstein and Robertson, 2015. It's like having a personal stylist who insists on dressing you in clown shoes and a tutu, and you start to think, maybe this is fashion. Maybe I'm the one who's out of touch. Algorithms create this feedback loop, a never-ending cycle that amplifies your preferences, your biases, and yes, even your fears. They take what you give them, your clicks, your likes, your time, and they churn out a version of reality that they think you'll find appealing. But here's the catch. This reality is often a distorted one. It's like looking into that funhouse mirror and mistaking it for the truth. And let's not forget, this isn't just a solo act. It's a performance for an audience. Your online persona, whether you've carefully curated it or not, is also subject to this algorithmic distortion. 
A study by Fox and McCowan in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships found that algorithmic suggestions could significantly impact how people perceive each other online. Fox and McCowan, 2017. So not only is your mirror distorted, but the mirrors others use to see you are also warped. Imagine you're at a social gathering and everyone is wearing those funhouse glasses that distort their view. You might be the most eloquent, charming person in that room, but if their glasses make you look like a cartoon villain, that's the role you'll be cast in. Algorithms act as these distorting glasses, shaping not just how you see the world, but how the world sees you. It's a two-way street of distortion, a dance where everyone's stepping on each other's toes and no one's quite sure who's leading anymore. The question we need to ask ourselves is, are we okay with this choreography? Are we content to waltz through life letting algorithms call the tune? Section 3. The Rewiring Act All right, folks, fasten your seatbelts because we're about to take a detour into the realm of science fiction, or so you'd wish it were fiction. Have you ever stopped to ponder how these algorithms might be rewiring the very fabric of your brain? Sounds like something straight out of a dystopian novel, doesn't it? But the science suggests this is far from fictional. A study published in the Journal of Cognitive Enhancement delves into the neurological impacts of our digital consumption, Meshi, Tamar, and Hikaran, 2019. It's not just about shaping your opinions or your shopping habits. We're talking about the alteration of neural pathways. These are the super highways of your brain, the routes that information takes from point A to point B. Algorithms are like construction crews redirecting traffic, changing the landscape over time until you find yourself in a completely different mental neighborhood. Think you can just browse Instagram for an hour every morning and remain yourself? Uh, good luck with that. Imagine your brain as a city. Now, the algorithm is that pesky city planner who keeps putting roundabouts where they have no business being. You wanted to go to the grocery store, but now you're somewhere at a pet shop, adopting a hamster. Don't blame your poor sense of direction, blame the algorithm. This rewiring isn't just academic, it has real world implications. The study points out that these neural changes can affect your decision making processes and even your emotional responses. Think about that for a moment. Your joys, your sorrows, your spontaneous decisions, and your carefully considered choices, all under the subtle influence of algorithms. So the next time you find yourself tearing up over a video of a cat befriending a duck, don't just blame the onions you're cutting or your soft heart. There's a good chance that an algorithm has been at work fine tuning what tugs at your heartstrings. It's like having a composer you never met writing the soundtrack to your emotional life. It's a brave new world, my friends, but it's also a bit unsettling, isn't it? How much of you is really you? And how much is a byproduct of algorithmic manipulation? It's a question worth pondering as we navigate this increasingly digitized landscape. Section 4. The Shadows and the Spotlight Now that we've ventured into the neural pathways of your brain, let's step back and look at the grand stage of your digital life. Algorithms are the unsung heroes and villains here, the stagehands and the directors working behind the curtains and also calling the shots. Gillespie, 2018. Picture a theater, if you will. You're both the actor and the audience. Algorithms are the invisible crew lurking in the shadows. They adjust the lights, move the props, and even prompt your lines. They decide what part of the stage is illuminated and what remains in obscurity. They're the ones who decide whether you get a standing ovation or whether the curtain closes on you prematurely. It's like being in a Broadway show, except you've never auditioned, you don't know the script, and the critics are a bunch of ones and zeros. Oh, and good luck finding the exit. The algorithm bricked it up and painted over it to keep you inside. Tarleton Gillespie, in his book, Custodians of the Internet, talks about the role algorithms play in content moderation and visibility. Gillespie, 2018. They're not just passive filters, they're active curators. They decide what trends, what goes viral, and what gets buried in the digital landfill. Your peer-reviewed, research-based post about how life actually works? Shadow banned. Your photo of a decadent brunch or a hot selfie? Front and center. What defines what's hot? The algorithms, all learning from what makes the lemmings focus on their screen the longest. And it's not just about what you see, it's also about what others see of you. Algorithms can make you the star of the show or regulate you to a bit part with a single line. They can amplify your voice or mute you, often without you even realizing it. So what's the takeaway here? Well, 
It's that algorithms have an enormous amount of power in shaping public discourse and personal narratives. They can spotlight social issues or trivialize them. They can make heroes or villains out of ordinary people. And all of this happens in the blink of an eye, in the click of a mouse, in the silence of a code running on a server far, far away. As we continue to live our lives on this digital stage, it's crucial to remember who and what's running the show and to question whether they deserve that power. After all, if you're both the actor and the audience in this theater, shouldn't you have a say in how the performance unfolds? Section five, the way out. We've journeyed through the labyrinthian world of algorithms, from the neural highways of your brain to the grand stage of your digital life. It's been a wild ride, but now comes the most pressing question. How do we navigate this maze? How do we reclaim some semblance of control? Awareness is your first weapon. It's like waking up in a dream and realizing you can control the narrative. A study in the Journal of Information Systems underscores the importance of being algorithmically literate. Booker, 2018. This doesn't mean you need to be a coding whiz or a data scientist. It means understanding the basics of how algorithms work and how they impact your life. Think of it as learning the rules of a board game that you've been playing unwittingly. You may not become the Grand Master, but at least you'll stop following into every trap the game sets for you. No more landing on go to jail without a get out of jail free card. Next, take control of your privacy settings. Most platforms offer some level of perceived customization, allowing you to decide what data you share and who can see it. It's like putting on a cloak in this digital theater, making you less visible to the puppeteers pulling the strings. Of course, even your privacy settings reveal how to better manipulate you, so there's that. Diversify your information sources. If you've been getting all your news from one or two social media platforms, are they owned by the same company though? It's time to branch out. Read different newspapers, follow different people, explore different genres, read different books. Surround yourself in real life by people with various interests, socioeconomic backgrounds, and education levels. By doing so, you are not just broadening your horizons, you're also making it harder for algorithms to pigeonhole you. And lastly, question the digital reality served to you on a silver platter. Just because an algorithm thinks you'll like something doesn't mean you have to consume it. Be discerning, be critical, and most importantly, be human. Algorithms may be smart, but they don't know you better than you know yourself, unless they do. So there you have it, folks. The labyrinth may be intricate, and the puppeteers may be cunning, but you're not without tools to navigate this complex landscape. Critical thinking and awareness are crucial. Arm yourself with knowledge, wield your privacy settings like a shield, and never stop questioning the world around you. After all, if you're both the actor and the audience in this digital drama, shouldn't you also be the critic? Before I go, I must point out that I posted the script for this episode on Facebook about a month ago. Now, I've never had a post taken down before. All my social media accounts are public as if I wouldn't post something publicly, I probably shouldn't post it at all. Maybe a little tip for you all. The post with this script was taken down almost immediately. Not because of a person, mind you, but because of the algorithm. It's almost like they are starting to protect themselves. And that, my friends, is intriguing. It will be interesting to see if this episode gets taken down on YouTube or Rumble. As always, my sources are listed in the podcast description. Please feel free to look them up and read them. They have been verified. I have read them. It's interesting. This is not something controversial. This has been known in academia for quite some time. My ex-wife, who got a PhD in special education and technology, actually took one of her, I believe, 900 level classes in exactly this, how social media and how the digital realm rewires your brain. So this is not new, guys. That's it for today's episode. Remember, you may not see the strings, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Stay curious and stay vigilant.